All right, I'm looking over the uh, top here. I've got it upside down here. And we've got a couple of issues to deal with here. Uh, these cracks. And it's got kind of a uh, pretty significant warp. And the way it's constructed, um, there's like a 5 16 inch mahogany board on top and a tulip poplar frame underneath. Uh, it's not unusual. Uh, very typical construction. Uh, what is unusual is the way they uh, tried to relieve, allow for shrinkage. Uh, they made some diagonal cuts in these uh, frame pieces here. And these are original because the cut saw marks uh, extend across here into the uh, mahogany. Uh, but this one in the middle is uh, buckled up, so it's not really doing the job of uh, keeping it flat. So what I'm thinking of doing is uh, removing this uh, middle board and replacing it with a solid board. Not putting these cuts in it. And um, figuring out a way to uh, allow for uh, movement. And then possibly uh, opening up these uh, saw cuts a little bit to allow the uh, top to uh, flatten out. The uh, top side, um, what I'm going to do here is uh, clean out the cracks, cut some very thin slivers of mahogany to fill in the cracks. And the last step is to uh, repair the veneer. Um, there's some pieces missing on the front here. And along the side. Okay, now I'm going to remove this uh, middle board here. It's all buckled. Uh, so I'm going to try to loosen the glue. It's uh, glued with hide glue to the mahogany. So I'm going to use some uh, denatured alcohol and uh, soak under there. And that'll break the uh, bond of the hide glue. I'm going to give that a few minutes to work. Right, this one's pretty well bonded. Uh, it's going to need a little bit more persuasion. I'm going to try to get under there with the chisel. And if we start to loosen it, I can get some more alcohol under there. There we go. All right, now I'm going to start uh, cleaning out the crack. Uh, I'm going to use the oscillating saw to get down and uh, clean the gunk out of the crack. And then the utility knife. And then some sandpaper. All right, on the outer uh, frame, uh, I had these uh, relief cuts. And what I want to do is open these up uh, to allow the top to uh, flatten. I'm going to use a little straight edge here. And then uh, just carefully run the saw in that saw cut to open it up a little bit. Alright, I decided to uh, put some butterflies across each crack. Here I'm making the uh, butterflies on the bandsaw. Then I'm going to put a slight bevel on them, first on the belt sander, and now the edges with the chisel. Alright, I marked out the area where the butterfly is going to go. Now I'm chiseling out the area about uh, 8 to 3 16 of an inch. I've got the uh, top clamped to a piece of melamine 
so it's uh, nice and flat and then when I clamp this down it's gonna bring this uh, crack even it's uh, slightly uneven All right, here we are, we got uh, two butterflies in across each crack. And once again, it's uh, clamped to a piece of melamine. I've got the uh, ends uh, clamped flat. If you remember, we relieved these uh, cuts and then allowed the uh, top to uh, go flat. All right, let me show you how I have this uh, clamp now um, to try to get the uh, middle part flat. I've got a board uh, going this way. And then um, a piece of maple going across with uh, clamps on both ends. And as you can see, it's got quite an arc to it. So it's uh, pushing down right here to try to get this uh, to hold it flat right in the middle here. I have an idea to replace the uh, middle piece that I took out. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is um, on both ends make a sliding dovetail. I'm gonna cut a pocket in the uh, front here uh, to match the back. And then uh, make a dovetail cut, uh, undercut both of these edges. So we got a dovetail joint on this uh, front and the back and then put a uh, sliding dovetail on the end of the stretcher All right, now I'm taking a board uh, that was cut at a 45 degree angle and holding it there to guide the saw to make the undercut. All right, I made a uh, new stretcher. I uh, used maple and it's about four inches wide by th uh, three eighths inch thick. And now I'm marking out the dovetail and uh, cutting the uh, dovetail. And the uh, saw was uh, following the grain, so it got it off a little bit. So now I'm going to square that up with the chisel and the file. And also had to uh, refine it a little bit to make it fit. Now I'm installing the stretcher. Uh, one dovetail is longer than the other to allow it to slide into the wider pocket and then back into the narrow pocket. And then install some glue blocks on either side to reinforce. Okay, there's our new uh, stretcher. And as you can see, it's uh, much flatter. Over with the uh, top side facing up and I got it clamped back in place again. And uh, a couple of uh, blocks with clamps uh, holding this uh, crack even. It was uh, sticking up a little bit in the front here. Ready to uh, start gluing in the slivers. I cut some thin strips of mahogany. Now I'm tapering one edge on the belt sander. And 
and it's fitting these in place. And I've got that pretty well fit. And I'm going to glue it. Crack narrows out right here. I'm just going to uh, take some glue and some sawdust and fill in that uh, remainder of that crack. Alright, there we go. Now we're going to let that uh, sit over the weekend. Stripped down here, needed a, a few clamps on it. It started to uh, crack and uh, split in half, which is not unusual since that little piece is so thin. So I put some uh, clamps on this uh, just to hold it in place and kind of hold it down in the crack. On the underside of the top I want to plug the old screw holes. I'm going to be drilling some new holes. Now I'm going to fill the cracks on the side the same as I did on the top. Okay, I've got those uh, plugs shaved off. Uh, now we've got to drill uh, new holes for uh, the new screws. And the top's ready to go back down. I'm going to do the veneer repair after I uh, put the top down. Just going to line it up and even it up. There was a slight overhang on the front before. I'm going to take a long skinny screwdriver and just to reach up there and mark the holes. And I got the mark right there. I'm going to drill up at a little bit of an angle. Alright, I found some screws that are uh, just the right length. And the impact driver again. Now in the back here, I'll get some screws in. 